Hello and welcome back. Okay, so in the last video, we were plotting our data uh, between the groups and kind of getting an idea here of how the, the groups are different from one another. Um, we're able to kind of get an idea of what's happening, but we're not able to test. We're not able to make any solid claims about the effect of these uh, different diets and the amount of protein on the overall population, okay, of, of rats on, on these diets. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and get into creating an ANOVA model, uh, just like t-tests that kind of build up, takes a little bit, right? You want to plot the stuff and summarize the stuff, uh, but the actual analysis and, and model creating takes uh, no time at all. It's kind of great. <laughs> So at least doing it through R, right? If we were doing this by hand, it would take forever. Uh, okay. So the first thing I want to do is, uh, well, I actually need to, I need to tell you something. So when we do ANOVAs, it's easier to create a model and save it as some kind of object um, rather than with the t-test, we were able to run the function in the script and that was that. With ANOVAs, we need to save it as something because we need to actually use two functions to, um, to get the information we want, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna just figure out a name that I wanna call this thing. Uh, I'll just call it model for now. And it's gonna get, okay, now what is it gonna get? Well, just like t-test, like how they had that uh, sort of function, ANOVA also has a pretty concise looking function name, and it's just AOV, okay? And already, if I hit tab, I can kind of see the things that it's asking for, okay? Uh, this is great, this is very cool. Uh, projections, QR, contrast, we're not gonna worry about that. It's just these two things, okay? It's just these two things that we need to supply some information. And let's do, um, let me kind of run onto a new space here. Let's do the formula first. Okay, let's do the formula first. And that's gonna equal what? Okay, this is where we get into some different notation. Uh, it's not too complicated, I promise, uh, but it is slightly different. We come back here, what do we wanna say? How do we wanna kind of define, uh, how, do we wanna, <laughs> how do we want to use ANOVA to answer uh, this question? How does diet affect weight? Okay, this is our outcome, this is our predictor. How do we specify that in here? Well, it turns out that the question we wanna ask is how is weight a function of diet? How is this affected by this? How is weight a function of diet? And that's it, that's our formula, okay? I know that this tilde is kind of weird, um, but what that translates to is uh, as a function of. Okay, so we're saying, I wanna model weight as a function of the diet. Okay, our, our uh, factor with four different levels called diet, okay? Now, you'll notice I'm not using any dollar signs here because the nice thing about ANOVA is that the next argument is data. And I just have to supply the data that I'm working with, okay? So no dollar signs are needed here uh, if we specify data, okay? Now we could alternatively do, you know, I'm doing this out here because it's not going to do anything. I could do rat and then weight as a function of rat dollar sign diet and not specify the data. Uh, but for now, we're going to be using some more functions in the future that follow the same kind of um, format, the same kind of structure. So we'll just leave it like this. Specify the formula first and then where the data comes from. Easy enough. Now, if I save this as something, you see, it gets saved over here. It's saved as a list, okay? There's a bunch of information uh, in here. Not too, too worried about the structure overall because we know we can kind of trust that this is doing uh, the correct um, thing, <laughs> math here. But if I just type in model and run enter, what does this give me? We'll come down here to the, to the console for a moment. This does not tell me much. Right. The, the one big thing that we want to look for is a p-value, right? Because that's going to answer the question uh, as to whether there is a difference, uh, at least one difference, right, among these groups. And, and right now we don't have that. We've got a residual standard error, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, blah, 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 blah. Um, this is not that helpful. So we use a new function. Now let me get rid of this. We use a new function. 
except <laughs> the nice thing is that it's not necessarily a new function. Uh, we've used this function before, but we're just supplying something different to it. Okay. So if I use this summary function, right, I put it on, if, if I use the summary function on the, um, uh, oh gosh, what do you call it? The data here. And let me actually, let me run this again. There we go. Um, sorry. I reread in the data and it was still treating uh, diet as a, as a character rather than a factor. Let me run this again too. Um, so if I, again, run this, we get no information, right? If I run the summary on the rat data, I get the summary, I get the kind of characteristics of the rat data. It turns out that if I put in summary and I put in our model, it will give me, oh my gosh, the characteristics of the model, okay? And then it will do all of the statistics uh, for us as well, okay? Now, if you're looking at the PowerPoints, you'll notice that I use the summary.aov function. Notice that it does the same thing, okay? We, we get the same information. Now, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint and just so we can kind of get a better idea of what we're looking at. So we see the code here. Um, we've got slightly different column names. We've got capitalized column names, but again, not a big deal. Okay, so, oh my gosh, <laughs> look at this. So I just did a bunch of crazy math for us, a bunch of calculus. We don't have to worry about that. Um, let's, so let's just take this apart one by one. Let me see if I even have it. Yeah, sweet. So degrees of freedom, DF. We have a bunch of different types of degrees of freedom now. Notice we have this new sort of residuals row here and it tells us the information there. I'm not gonna so much go over, uh, honestly, these first three things here uh, because there's a whole class kind of devoted to, to this whole idea of ANOVA and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna overstep there. So you don't so much use this um, in, in any interpretation. These are just used to calculate the F value and the P value, okay? Now, um, you're, not, you're probably wondering, what the heck is an F value? Well, very similar to how T tests had a T value, that's kind of that test statistic, right? In this case, we just have to use a slightly different in, uh, distribution to make conclusions here. Um, again, this kind of information is not totally ran or is not totally uh, necessary to like really wrap your head around. Just knowing that we use the F distribution rather than a T distribution um, is you know about as far as you need. And this PR greater than F, this is just a relic of the past uh, when you had to do this kind of stuff by hand. Well, I don't know if you can hear about that, but it's super windy right now. Um, but surprise, surprise, right? It's Wyoming. Anyway, uh, this kind of notation here is just a relic of the past. We just want to see the probability that our F value is greater than the um, critical F value. Very similar to doing t tests by hand. This is the same same idea here. But this just translates to a p value. Okay, it's the same same kind of idea, right? It's the probability that the information we saw, the differences that we saw, is due to chance. And in this case, it's only two point three. Uh, a 2.3% chance that um, our data, the differences in our data are due to uh, randomness, okay? Again, not super, super important to get totally hung up on that definition because what the p-value actually tells us that it answers, uh, let, me, let me go back to the hypotheses here. Let me go back to the hypotheses. Hello, hello, actually though, am I an idiot? Don't answer that. Oh my gosh, where did it go? Did I get rid of it? No, here it is. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> go back in time and fast forward through that part of the video. Anyway, so that p-value answers uh, this question. It kind of it kind of influences what claim we're about to make. Okay, and let's recall that typically we use an alpha of 0 0.05. Okay. And anything below that means that we make this claim. Okay, we make this claim. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, oh, then we just make this claim, okay? So we'll go back then to the output. Let me go here. I, actually, let me go here. So what is our p-value? Well, we even have this nice little asterisk telling us that, ah, oh, nice. 
it is below this 0.05 level. And in, in fact, it's, it's 0 0.023. Okay, so the question is, is at least one of the groups different? And the ANOVA says, yes. Yes, it is, okay? There is at least one group in there that is statistically significantly different than the rest, okay? Now, before we get into um, sort of how to figure out which one of the groups is statistically significantly different than the rest, let's see if we can even trust this. Recall that we need to make sure that each group has similar variance, okay? At least comparatively uh, between them, okay? Because the ANOVA, this, this type of model here, is very, very uh, sensitive to um, uh, unequal variance, okay? It will maybe make the claim that there is one group that is different, uh, but that's just because one of the groups has a really narrow distribution, maybe, okay? And that's not a fair comparison to make, okay? And we have ways of kind of accounting for that, but we first just need to check that, okay? And we're going to get into this idea of residuals, okay? I'll pause the video now just so you can kind of take a break, and we'll get back into this idea momentarily.